Hello! If you're watching this, then that means that everything went to plan and I was finally able to get my video recording set up working and record a pencil review. So, uh, yesterday I went to Target and kind of poked around for a little bit, kind of looking for like a tripod or something that I could use so that I can, you know, still record my videos on my phone, but be able to kind of do the bird's eye view kind of reviews that I'm used to doing. So I found something that I think will work and I kind of feel like I have to sneeze. No, okay. Um, I found something that I think is gonna work. So again, if you're watching this then that means it worked. It's a little bit unusual. I wasn't able to actually find a good tripod um, because all the tripods they have were meant for regular cameras. And I know I could probably get a little holder for my phone, but that's just a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work and it's a lot of money to put out for something that brings me no income when I'm unemployed. So yeah. I just decided to go with something that seemed simple, so this is what I went with. I know it's a little goofy looking. I'll take my phone out of there. So this is a little guy that's meant to, it's a little Belkin guy. It's meant to like fit into the cup holder of a car, and then your phone just kind of sits in here. It's nice and grippy and rubbery. But the nice thing is that it can tilt to be flat like that, and then I can like rotate it 360 degrees. So if I am patient with it, I can kind of get my phone into it and kind of, you know, rotate it and everything. So then my, the camera on my phone will kind of hang out over the side like that. So that way I can get up underneath it and still film um, close up stuff. I think based on kind of my testing, um, because when I film things on my phone, I can't really control the size of the video. Basically 16 by nine is, is the option. So it, because it's very wide, I think you are going to see a little bit of this kind of side of it because I just can't, you know, hang the phone out far enough then it topples over. So that's just kind of how it's going to be. There's disadvantages and advantages to everything. The advantage of this was that it was like 30 bucks and, and it lets me film anywhere. So I can put this, you know, on a windowsill. I can put it on a table. I, I'm going to be filming on the floor today because I'm in my bedroom because that's where the best natural light is at this time of day. So it's very nice because it's portable, it's small, it's, you know, doesn't take a lot of work, it's not super technical or anything, and it will work, you know, with my phone, my phone, it would work with Wesley's phone if I had to film on his. So yeah, this is what I think I'm going to use, we'll see how it works out in the long run, but I don't want to ramble on too much, I'm going to get to reviewing the pencil, the pencil I'm looking at today is the Field Notes pencil. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Hello again. So as I mentioned in kind of my intro, this guy right here seems to be unavoidable. That's just the base of the little recording stand that I have. But you know what? It's not super intrusive, so we're going to work with this. And hopefully I don't bump it around too much. Also, as I mentioned, this is my hardwood floors in the bedroom. Very rustic, lots of character, which also means that they look dirty all the time, but they aren't. I just swept. So there's just stuff kind of stuck to them because they're old. Anyway, the pencil that we're looking at today is the Field Notes pencil. Come on, focus. Is the Field Notes pencil. Um, this is a truly naked pencil. Um, they kind of give you the facts about the pencil on the side. Lacquer free, recyclable, feral, um, environmentally friendly eraser, and non-toxic inks. So. This guy I got uh, from CW Pencils, which I will link down below. Um, I bought just one of them. You can buy them in packs of six from the Field Notes website, and I will also link their website down below. Um, it's a number two pencil, so HB. Um, so yeah, let's kind of get into it. I'll kind of go through the categories that I use for my um, written review, and then I'll show you a little bit about the smearing and the eraser tests that I do. So in terms of construction, um, kind of, you know, just the appearance, like how does it look, stuff like that. Um, it's a truly naked pencil. It is smooth, um, but still grippy. Um, so it kind of has that really nice, like natural wood thing where if you have sweaty hands, like your hands aren't gonna slip around all over the place, but you're also not gonna get a splinter from it or anything. Uh, and then it has this cool green eraser on the end which I think looks really cool. We'll get to the function of it a little bit later. I also think the ferrule, I think it looks like a soup can. Um, maybe because it's not wood clinched, I think it just is glued on there. 
but maybe it's like the, the ribbing on here and the fact that it's very silver, but to me it looks like a soup can. So yeah. Um, in terms of the just overall kind of care and construction, um, it seems to be good. The leads seem to be well centered. I can't quite get the camera up high enough to show you that, but the, and granted this is a sample size of one, but the leads seem to be well centered. Um, you know, the ferrule and eraser are solidly on there. There's no wiggling around or anything. Um, in terms of sharpening, a wedge sharpener did a fine job. I don't remember any problems with it. I sharpened it a, like a day or two ago with the wedge sharpener, but I don't remember any problems, so that went fine. Um, sharpening with a knife, that's what you can see here is my knife sharpening efforts. Let's, you know, be honest, my knife sharpening efforts aren't very good. Um, I have a long way to go, but it seemed to work just fine. Um, the wood came off pretty easily. I was able to get a nice long point on it. So um, that worked pretty well. I have no complaints sharpening with either method. In terms of writing, I can go ahead and show you what the writing looks like on here. This is just kind of the notes that I took. Um, it wrote fairly smoothly. Um, it's a bit light because, you know, it's a number two pencil HB. I think I prefer something more in the B to 2B range, um, but it wrote pretty well. It's, it's easy to read. Um, it's got a little bit of tooth to it, but not so much that I would call it a super rough writing pencil. It's overall pretty smooth with just enough tooth to kind of let you know what you're doing. In terms of point retention, I would, I'm a little different about this. I don't, need it to hold a point for a super long time because I tend to use these pencils to write in field notes or things like that. So to me, good point retention means that I could write an entire page and then maybe I'd have to sharpen the pencil. So in terms of point retention, I got at least a page out of it. So that's good enough for me. And then as we move down, so now we get to the erasing and the smearing. So I, I do the eraser and the smear test on three different types of paper. So this is kind of my like nice paper, my Mikel Reuse paper, which is very smooth, very fountain pen friendly. And then I also do a Field Notes Pitch Black, which I consider to be very not fountain pen friendly. Not that it's not a decent notebook and decent paper, but it's not friendly to fountain pens. And then also a Palomino Forest Choice Notebook as kind of a middle ground. So on this paper, the nice paper, um, the eraser on the pencil did an okay job similar to my separate eraser. I basically just do one pass with the eraser this way and then that way, and that's it. Because, you know, you could work harder, but I need something that's um, gonna be the same across the board. So they both worked about equally well and about as well as most of the other pencils I've been testing. One thing I did notice on, for the eraser on the pencil, I found that like, you know how you get the little eraser gunk that comes off, you know, the pencil and kind of sticks to the page? I found that, well, with my separate eraser, you know, I got the little gunkies and then I could just kind of blow them away. With this pencil, they really stuck to the page. Like I could not blow the little eraser boogers or whatever you want to call them away. I really had to get on there and like, m you know, move them away with my finger. So that was kind of annoying to me. Um, because it means that you're constantly having to brush at anything that you erase. And I don't, I don't like that as much. And it, it wasn't just on this paper, I found that on all the papers. So in terms of erasing on a field notes, pretty much the same, um, you know, same performance and same problems with the eraser. And then for the Forest Choice Notebook, very similar. Um, similar performance, similar problems with the eraser boogers. So then moving on to the smearing, um, the way that I test the smearing is I write the word smear and then I go back and forth 10 times. So I go, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10 um, on all the papers. Just again, to have something that's consistent so that I can kind of measure it against other pencils and against different papers. So on here, you can see that it barely smeared at all. Let's see if I can get this closer and have it focus, maybe. So you can see it barely smears at all on this Forest Choice paper. If we take a look at the field notes, again, hardly any smearing. And then if we look, let's see if I can kind of move this guy. If we look over here on this notebook, it's hard to get it closer because I'm currently sitting on top of the notebook, but you can see there's a little bit of kind of gray 
halo around there, but overall this I think has been the most smear resistant pencil I've tested so far. So that was really good. Okay, let's move this back over onto the floor. Okay. Um, so then in terms of value, so these sell by the half dozen packs of six pencils. Um, and it's $5 per half dozen from the Field Notes website. I believe I paid a dollar for this pencil from CW Pencils. So it's a, a little bit more to get them individually, but not much more. Um, overall, for me, you know, I like that it was smear resistant and I like that it's eco friendly, but for me, you know, it writes lighter than I'd prefer. So there's that issue. Um, I could maybe overlook that because of the smear resistance, like in terms of something to go in a bullet pencil or something. But um, I think, you know, $10 a dozen is more than I would pay for this pencil. If it was $5 a dozen or even $6 a dozen, I think that'd be fine. But you know, when you're getting up to $10 a dozen, that's getting close to like the Palomino HB. So I don't know. I just, I think for the price, I would probably not buy this pencil by the dozen, but I definitely will not mind using the rest of this pencil. And I might buy, you know, one or two of them down the road, but yeah, for me, this is not the pencil. I think I also forgot to mention that this is a round pencil, which of course is hard to show, but you can kind of see, it looks like it's faceted, but I think that's just the way the wood grain is, but it is indeed a round pencil. So this has been the first round pencil that I've really worked with. Um, I thought I would prefer round pencils, but it turns out I don't really have a preference. I think I just prefer pencils that are not a sharp hex. I prefer kind of the like more rounded hex or semi-hex, um, but I didn't prefer this round pencil to the hex pencils that I've been using. So yeah, that's my review of the Field Notes number two pencil. Overall, a decent pencil, good if you're looking for something with smear resistance, good if you're looking for something that's eco-friendly. Um, not so good if you're going to burn through pencils at an incredible rate because they are certainly not the most budget-friendly pencil. But yeah, that's all I got. I will see you guys hopefully with another pencil review in a couple of days since I think that this went okay. All right, bye!